Welcome to our member town hall. This town hall has a specific focus on um, the COVID vaccine here in New York and the rollout. Um, I will do some quick introductions for those that don't know me and for those that do. I'm Alex Fontanez. I'm the manager of member engagement here at Amedicare. And um, I can introduce the rest of our team that will be presenting today. To the other two that you can see on screen is Kevin Steffens. If you can unmute yourself and say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin Steffens. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Services and Programs here at Amedicare. And then right next to Kevin, we have Dr. Ernst, who is our Chief Medical Officer. Good afternoon. Thank you. So um, just to continue, I want to go over some um, some guidelines before we start our presentation. Um, hold on one second. Some guidelines and rules. So if you have to ask a question, um, we ask that you ask it in the chat function, or if you look on the little side, it says raise hand if you have a question. Also, if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, or if you need any additional assistance, you can contact myself, Sandrine, or Lamont uh, Johnson, who's on, on the chat, and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one or some if you need additional help afterwards. Also, after this, um, after this presentation, we'll be uh, doing a digital survey. So if you would like to receive a $5 Amazon gift card, complete the survey. I will share the link at the very end of the presentation and um, we'll send you that gift card at the day after via email. Also, just to uh, go over some respect and privacy um, uh, guidelines, please make sure that you try to refrain from playing in, in, in a public space. Uh, if, if you're on speaker, try to keep it uh, you know, close to your ear, not playing out loud, and please respect those that are, are speaking, all right? Um, to kick things off, uh, we wanted to share a video with you. Um, so we're gonna share a, a, a video specifically pertaining about the vaccine. W. Kamal Bell. There's good news out there. There's a COVID-19 vaccine, yay! But the bad news is, as black folks, it's hard to trust what's going on. So what do we do? Well, we turn to people we can trust, black folks, but not just your uncle at the cookout. No, 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 actually not him at all. I'm talking about black scientists, black doctors, and black nurses. Okay, first question. The vaccine happened fast, like super fast, like Usain Bolt headed to the bathroom fast. Is that something we should be concerned about? Having an emergency authorization for these medications was critical, but that doesn't mean any steps were cut. Anything where money could be traded off for time, that was happening, like money was no object. They still have all of the rigor that they use for uh, approving any vaccine. So we can feel confident that the science is still there. The messenger RNA technology has been in development for the last 12 years. So even though you hear this thing about warp speed, believe me, that was not warp speed. And I think the data is real. It's, it suggests it's highly effective. About a week or so after your second dose, the people who had gotten the placebo or who didn't get the true vaccine, their rates of coronavirus continued to climb, whereas the people who had gotten the vaccine, it just flattened out. And what about side effects? Uh, soreness from the injection site. I had a little bit of arm soreness. Arm sore? Is that a side effect? My arm's sore right now. The common things, soreness at the injection site, headache, fever, maybe a swollen lymph nodes. The second dose is when there's more common, those systemic side effects. Is this like one of those pharmaceutical commercials where at the end they talk real fast about the side effects and it's like, you're also going to get hair from your eyeballs and vampirism. <laughs> My sister texted me um, the second day uh, after I got the first vaccine and I remember she was like, are you a zombie yet? And we just laughed like, no, I'm not. So the big answer is no. <laughs> and the reason being is we are not injecting the virus into your body. The vaccine is training your body. It is making those antibodies to fight that disease. So I view it as a, a you know, positive thing. 
So here's a question from everybody's uncle. And since I'm an uncle, it's a question for me too. Are the drug companies just trying to get rich off this? The drug companies will certainly get rich. Oh, well, drug companies are always trying to get rich, but that's not the point, right? That is really how a lot of our innovation happens. That is why the drug companies will spend millions upon millions in research. Were black and brown people a part of this process or was it only like white folks, you know, like NASCAR white folks? The trials were intentionally broad and inclusive. Yeah, black and brown folks have been recruited for the clinical trials. We have ensured that each of the four historically black medical schools that we are all vaccine trial sites. So here's the big question. How much are you charging us for this vaccine? Right now, getting vaccinated is free. Free? Yes, it's free. <laughs> like free, free, free. It will be free. Like not even free 99. We have not charged anyone. Okay, should I be suspicious that you aren't charging us? No, because there are some things that the government invests in that um, for the good of the people. Taxpayers like you and I contributed to the development of, um, of these vaccines. What if I'm not worried about getting COVID-19? Like you could say, I never had smallpox. I've never had tetanus. Why do I need the shot? That's why we give vaccines. Vaccines are prevention. I pretty much tell people you're going to be exposed some, some kind of way, right? So you, might, you better be ready to fight. And what about you? Have you? Will you? I got my first dose uh, uh, about three weeks ago. I have not gotten the vaccine yet, but um, rest assured, uh, I'm anxiously waiting. I definitely will be getting vaccinated when my turn comes. I was scared getting it, and then after I got it, I was like, oh, well, I guess it wasn't that bad. <laughs> when the vaccine went in, I felt this intense amount of honor. Like a lot of people, I like to get my medical information from bizarre, dark corners of the internet that haven't been vetted. Is that a good idea? Oh dear. Please do not continue to do that. That is definitely not a good idea. <laughs> Unfortunately on the internet, pretty much anyone can post anything. There are no microchips. There's no stealing of your DNA. No, none of that is happening. Thank you doctors. All right, I'll let you get back to work. And thank you for allowing me to ask you these questions. Oh, but before you go, just wanna let you know, your parents are super proud of you. It's all they can talk about. Thank you. Um, wasn't that a good video? But I just wanted to share this with you all because we want to make sure that we dispel a lot of these myths, specifically in our black and brown communities. And um, we, I thought this would be a very helpful video. Um, also, what I did forget to do before earlier that um, I would like to take a moment right now um, is just to take a moment of silence for those that we have who. who we have lost to COVID-19 this year or in the year before, but I just want to take one moment of silence just to recognize everybody that we've lost. All right. Okay. Thank you. So if, um, let me pull up uh, the presentation and we can just dive right into the, uh, the general presentation about the COVID-19 vaccine. If Kevin, you can unmute yourself and I'll pull up the, the screen. Excellent, I'm, that, that video is definitely gonna be a tough act to follow. So um, sorry about that. Um, and let's see, since we, since we do have a kind of small group, I'm, I'm counting maybe four or five members. Um, I think it would probably be helpful if it's agreeable to Alex and the team if we do this a little bit more informally. Um, you know, we'll, we'll touch base on what's on the slides, but we have our uh, chief medical officer, Dr. Ernst, with us, uh, who um, has been doing, you know, certainly has a lot of experience with. Uh, in healthcare for all of these years and with HIV and, and all the other comorbidities that, that we do see at Amedicare, uh, but has been doing a lot of research uh, into and study around the vaccine and is a wealth of information. So we wanted to give this opportunity to our members to speak to him directly about any questions you may have. Uh, next slide. 
So some of this will probably be a, um, a repeat. You've heard a lot of this already. We, you know, the slides are kind of small and we are definitely gonna make them available to you after if you would like to, because we did try to get some vital information in here. We're not gonna go over everything on the slides, uh, but we wanted to use those as a basis for our conversations. So as uh, most folks are aware, uh, there are three vaccines that have been approved by the FDA, uh, Moderna, Pfizer, and the Johnson & Johnson. Um, they've all shown to be efficacious and to be effective in working uh, to uh, uh, limit the illness uh, if you were to get it um, and to um, drastically reduce any type of spread. Yeah, at this point, they are the best vaccine, the best uh, you know, uh, protection we have right now, except, except besides uh, um, from COVID-19. Um, and they uh, are really showing every day. I don't know if you if you keep up with the news, you'll see each and every day that even more articles are coming about as time has gone on now that we've been experiencing uh, the uh, folks getting vaccinated and more and more information out there that they're even seeing how much longer these are uh, are lasting. And you know that 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 like we said, since this is unknown and it did come about pretty quickly, although I believe those doctors definitely expelled some of our concerns around uh, the the vaccine being developed so quickly, um, we're still learning a lot as we go along. So um, we are uh, uh, learning more, like we said, and getting more and more information every day. I was just seeing an, saw an article today that Pfizer, they're saying, is, is now showing, I think it's 91% uh, efficacy after uh, six months. Um, so each day we're seeing more information on them. I did see a question pop up. Um, I don't know if we want to just do that, we can just do that as we go along since uh, which of the three has the best results? I don't know, Dr. Ernst, you wanna take that? Yeah, I was going to, um, I just wanted to send a text to say maybe we'll hold it to the end, but no, I'm happy to, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. so first, first of all, I am not a NASCAR white guy. <laughs> just make that sure. Uh, although I do have friends who like NASCARs, but anyway. Uh, Right, it, it, there is, it's a very good question and the answer is yet to be firm. Uh, the vaccines were developed and tested at different stages of, let me, um, let me make this like this so I can see who asked the question. Yes, among, hi, I'm Jerry Ernst. So all, the, one of the, the vaccines that are being coming out now, the third one, was tested, the tests were on in a late, much later than the first two. I think the first two, the Pfizer and the Moderna began testing uh, probably, I, I don't know the exact date, but maybe six, eight months ago. And the um, uh, third one, which is the, uh, S, I think it's the AstraZeneca one. No, it's the Johnson & Johnson one. Uh, the AstraZeneca is still in process. Estrogen, yeah, but AstraZeneca is approved for your here, um, the third one, the Johnson & Johnson one, uh, which is a one injection uh, uh, vaccination with um, less stringent freezer requirements, uh, that one was tested later. So as you may already know, the virus has mutated. Uh, today in New York, the two strains that are prevalent now in New York were not even known when the first virus, when the first vaccines, first, the first two were tested. So the first two vac vaccines were tested against the same virus, but a different variant. It showed, they showed 90 or above 95% efficacy of preventing serious disease. The one that was tested, the Johnson & Johnson one, was tested in a population where there were, uh, where there's a lot of the English variant and a lot of uh, the South African variant. And it did very well, but it was tested, um, it was only one dose. And um, it, it did prevent serious disease, it did prevent death, but the, it depended, the percentages were lower uh, when, when um, the patient reached a certain amount of time. So I don't remember the time, but 
that you would get the vaccine and then you would be tested periodically to see if you were symptomatic and then how many people who, uh, if you had the virus and then how many people died compared to, or got seriously sick compared to, to uh, people who did not get the vaccine. Um, it was only one dose and the numbers were, I think around 70% in the United States where by that time there was a different variant. Um, and the information that's coming out now is that uh, it's, as more time goes by, that set, all the vaccines are more effective. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine today is thought to be much more effective as more time went by from the initial dose. All that means is everything changes, the variants are affecting, uh, affecting uh, uh, what, we're, what results because the longer this virus keeps spreading and it's spreading really bad today and yesterday and the day before, there's more opportunity for mutations, for variants to develop. Whether those variants are more deadly or are resistant to the vaccine, we only know that over time. So right now, uh, and I think there's unanimity, uh, the question was asked in public of, of Dr. Fauci among others, we were asked if you were to take the vaccine today, which one would you take? One guy said, I would take the newest one, I would take the J&J. &J. The other Fauci I think said, I would take whatever's available uh, because the results are so good and the results are even getting better as more time goes on. And there's always the possibility for booster shots and something that they are thinking about now. Uh, some people, it's not recommended, but, and it hasn't been completely studied, so this is all new, but it, it, they're showing that if the first shot is one vaccine, if it's a two shot, so if it's either Moderna or the Pfizer, if you get the first shot of a Pfizer and then something happens, and you're in a, a different place and all they have is Moderna, you take the Moderna shot, you may even be more protected. You may be, you certainly are as protected, but they need more studies. This is all developing. The only thing that can say, I'm, I'm going on a bit because we have so few people and hopefully this will address a, a, a bunch of questions. What, I, I, I'll give you a personal example. My son, uh, who's uh, about Kevin's age, I uh, was flying to Puerto Rico yesterday. And so he got tested for COVID. He tested positive. He had no symptoms. He canceled all his trips. He went home, he called his doctor and he called me and uh, he was short of breath and he was uh, worried. And he got tested again and it was negative. The shortness of breath was because uh, of an injury he had before and his worry was still there. And it, it, the thing was to be test for him to be tested again. He got his second shot two weeks ago. There are cases that we think that the second shot, if two weeks after the second shot, is that, and three weeks for sure, but two, even two weeks, the CDC guideline says you can take, you can mingle, you're protected. What that's, but what is studied, you're protected from symptomatic disease. You're not protected from carrying it. So what I think happened to him is it was two weeks after the shot, he got another, he got it tested and it was, a, it was positive and six hours later or 12 hours later when he got the second test, it was negative. It was because of the vaccine, probably, again, not 100%, the vaccine protected him markedly from getting symptoms. The chest pain was not a symptom, it went away, his oxygen was normal. And unfortunately, he can't go to Puerto Rico and he's getting a third test. And I told him, why the hell are you going to Puerto Rico in the middle of an epidemic? You can get, you can get infected. So, you know, there is no one answer. The answer is in New York, if you get vaccinated today, I think New York right now is the first, or New York and New Jersey are tied for first place in new cases. Uh, Wisconsin is going crazy out there and, and people are, are 
and it, it's the, the, the answer is to get vaccinated with, which, with whatever vaccine you can get a hold of as quickly as possible. Even if it comes out that, that the variants may be not as sensitive, all the ones studied so far in a, in a reasonable study, not these anecdotal responses, have shown that the, that they are still offer a, a degree of protection. So you may not, uh, so my son, if he was a variant that was, was a different variant, maybe her get a fever, but you won't get, at least it hasn't happened yet. You won't get admitted to the hospital, you won't get into the intensive care unit and you won't die. So that's where we are. We're changing the course of the disease and we're probably preventing the disease. The results just aren't out there yet. There are results from the Pfizer vaccine that showed uh, in Israel, where 50% uh, of the population is vaccinated, I think, they gave people vaccinations and measured, did, how, did they get every week, I think, did they get positive uh, tests? Did they get asymptomatic spread? And the answer was no. But that's just one study and we need to keep doing more. So I, that was a long answer, but I hope I, I really just wanna give you my personal opinion. The best thing you can do right now is get whatever vaccine you can get, continue to wear a mask, see what happens with this new upsurge in New York and in New Jersey and in Wisconsin and Michigan and all that stuff. And, and uh, hopefully uh, we're still on track to have everyone vaccinated a couple of three months and uh, looking forward to um, uh, a, a summer and fall that are gradually opening up. That's that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ansiff. So I think that did cover a lot. And I think since we did say we have um, you know just a few members on, we did want to make it a little more informal and just have you know some conversation around uh, you know questions that folks have. Um, Alex, you want to go to the next slide? Thanks. So the next couple slides, I, I from just rereading them, uh, I believe a lot of these were answered in the video, uh, but we wanted to um, open it up to some questions and, and we'll uh, uh, go from there. So I do see a question on top. I think it's Anthony, is it? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can Hi, hear Anthony. me. Yes, we can. Um, um, it was important to me to take any shot that comes along. And I had my second shot yesterday. But now it was the Moderna. But now I'm wondering, is the Moderna able to withstand against the variants that's out there? So right now, I believe, and, and I, I could be wrong, I, I don't believe that, how do I say this? Uh, there's no evidence yet of people who got Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson & Johnson uh, having uh, a getting infected and having being either hospitalized or uh, uh, being seriously sick or intubated or in an ICU. Uh, if they got the Moderna or Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson. Uh, and I'm trying to say uh, the vaccines produce a, a broad response, a broad antibody response. And you get very high levels. The, va the, the virus that these two, the variant that these two were created for or around when these were created, you needed, they, it, this is the level here, you can see me like this. This is, the, this is the level of antibodies that they produce for the variants, the older variants, you needed uh, this much, I'm sorry, you needed this, this many were effective. For the newer ones, if you got this many, they're affected also. The, all those vaccines give you this many, so they're also good against the variants. That doesn't mean that it'll be, if you do get infected now, the variant might not be as effective, it might be able to escape this. 
we don't know. So what they do, and unfortunately, uh, uh, this is another failure of the uh, uh, of the uh, of of us of the healthcare system that uh, they did not spend enough, have enough resources to do these testing of to take when you're positive to see if that virus, that variant is, is the same as the one that they tested a vaccine against or not, is it a new one? They're doing that now. Right now in New York, I, I think I just said it, it's either 40% the English uh, variant and the New York variant, I think it's another 20, 30% and there's a few South Africans in there too. Uh, but that's constantly changing. The longer people are this spike in people getting infected, the longer that continues, the greater the chance of a variant developing that will not work against any vaccine. That's why there's a race here to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. That's why, and you know, I'm very uh, impressed by how quickly they're doing this. They expect in New York next week to open up to everybody, I think, for a vaccine. And everybody should get vaccinated. And they're beginning trials in, in uh, adolescents and children. Uh, and I think high school students will, will be, able, will be, are beginning to be vaccinated or shortly will be vaccinated with one of the vaccines. So it's moving very quickly. The thing that is most disappointing, and it's, um, and I, I don't, it's, it's, I think it's part of human nature. I think we've been through such a long period of um, quarantine. Certainly, I, you know, if you're at risk, you, you don't, uh, I can't remember the last time I ate out of, ate outside or ate inside, ate in a restaurant, inside in a restaurant <laughs> since this started. But what I'm trying to say is that um, it's almost at the end and you gotta hold on. You really gotta wear those double masks, keep the distance, wash your hands, don't go to an indoor restaurant, don't go to gatherings uh, that are larger than, uh, than, I don't know, you know, it depends where you are, but parties and all that, is, no, is a definite no-no. Those are the places where this can spread more, easier. So, and the new variants spread much more easily than the older ones. I mean, that's just an assumption because it's boom, wow, it really, uh, it really jumped up there. So that's the advice is please, uh, I mean, the head of the CDC was on television, she almost broke into tears pleading with people, don't give up, don't go out, <laughs> don't, re don't stop precautions. We're almost there um, and let's see, let's see who wins the race. That's what I got. Thank you, Dr. Ernst. So um, the next slide kind of covers once again, uh, a lot of the questions that were answered in the, the video, uh, but we wanted to you know, remind, especially our, our media care members that this is of no cost to you. Um, and um, also that you can go to the next slide, um, Alex, please. Uh, you know, what, what the uh, availability is, and Dr., as Dr. Ernst just said, as of today, it's adults over 30, folks with underlying conditions, um, and, and the initial offerings that you'll see on here that have been on since, since day one. But as of next Tuesday, as of the 6th, um, any adult over 16 will be able to get the vaccine in New York. So that, that's pretty much everybody. Um, it, and uh, I just, really- uh, Hold on, just, it, it, just to be totally, uh... Uh, informed by the experience we have, what Kevin's saying is correct. Everyone should be able to get the vaccine, is eligible for the vaccine. Let's hope that the delivery and the, let's hope the vaccine is there. Uh, for, I mean, we've had trouble in the past, you know, I'm sure you all know. Uh, it's expected that the demand is going to be enormous and there probably will be glitches and so forth. So, uh, it's not going to be as easy as it's there. Go, go walk to walk around the corner and get it. Yeah, but I yep, agree that's, with Kevin. That's what I was going to say. So. Okay. 
<laughs> well, you're, we're often on the same page, Dr. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I said, but um, I, you know, Dr. Ernst gave some personal examples that, you know, I've been trying to get uh, uh, scheduled for my partner and, you know, it's every day going into onto the different websites. And, you know, I think I have four or five websites now that, you know, that, that are recommended and you try to get in and you try to, I actually just within right before this meeting was able to get him in the Javits Center, but not till the end of May. Uh, the Javits Center did show a lot of openings today, um, and they are booking out further. This was actually into June they were also booking. So um, I think that that's something new. So I, but as Dr. Ernst said, there will definitely, it's not going to be as easy as just, you know, making an appointment for tomorrow, but it's persistence, you know. And one of the things that Medicare is, is trying to do, and we can jump to the, to the next slide, um, Alex. I think it's the next one, maybe one more. One more, sorry, <laughs> yeah, is Medicare is uh, doing a lot of work with our provider networks, uh, mainly our uh, uh, sponsor sites and large volume sites where we have connected with them to offer our assistance in uh, getting in touch with members, letting uh, members know what's going on um, in, at their sites. Um, and there is also some information that will be on our website that uh, Nikki can address in, in a couple minutes um, about what these sites are doing because there's really amazing response coming from our owner sites and our um, and our major volume sites. Uh, but we want you to know that Amedicare is on top of this with our sites, making sure that they're uh, providing the services that that they can and that you are aware of what they are able to provide and, and what uh, the availability is out there. Um, for example, uh, a site such as um, Callan Lord or Harlem United, we are actually calling Callan Lord and Harlem United members um, and making them aware of what's going on at their site and actually scheduling them when possible. Um, other sites have just asked us to continue with our education process, letting our providers know, letting our members know what is, um, you know, what's going on there and how they can uh, get the information. We have a really amazing website. Uh, the Medicare website has a web page specifically dedicated to uh, the vaccine and, and COVID information, which has all of the latest information that we get regularly. Um, and I don't know if Nikki, if you want just to touch on the, the latest that was added to it today. Yes, that's great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Nicolette. Piscatelli. I'm the Senior Director of um, Network Operations here at Amedicare. Um, so we've reached out to all our sponsor sites and the stats that they provided us to date um, are most current on our website. So uh, between all our sponsor sites, thus far the amount of persons they were able to vaccinate um, is over 150,000 um, um, New York City um, people. And some of our sites are also um, offering a, a web page where you can actually go on and log and um, possibly get and schedule for vaccinations. So that information is there for you as well. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. I'm going to also share this in the chat as well. I'll, oh, I'll send the link. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. Also, uh, you'll find that a lot of the sites have what's called a waiting list as well. So um, if you are, you can't make an appointment at that point, you can get on a waiting list because you know, you, you probably most people have heard the stories out there that you, know, you, you wait at, the, at uh, the pharmacy at the end of the day for anything that's left over for people that have missed their appointments. So that's the same that's happening at a lot of our community sites. So they have um, waiting lists. I did hear more recently that, um, and we did not update, update this on the slide, and we will going forward, um, there's a new website called Dr. B, and this is a website that is combining um, the wait lists from majority of different places, and actually Housing Works just emailed me that they are transferring their own personal wait list to the Dr. B wait list. So this will let you know that, you know, in this, actually, you know, four o'clock this afternoon, these folks have, um, here we go, <laughs> at four o'clock this afternoon, the, these sites have um, availability. Uh, you will get a uh, text and you have to respond within 15 minutes if you're going to take advantage of that. If not, they go to the next person. So we're seeing this come up um, with a lot of sites as well. So this is, it's a lot of innovative, um, you know, websites and processes are coming out of this uh, just to make sure that folks get uh, the access that they need. Uh, but like we said, since it was a smaller group, we wanted to make this a little more informal. So do you have your questions um, or 
or concerns or anything you would like to ask the Medicare team or, or Dr. Ernst, our, our uh, chief medical officer? I have a question. Uh, it was said that the vaccine was free. And uh, when I was trying to make my appointment, um, they told me that I would have to bring my insurance card. So why do they take the insurance card? Do they charge the insurance? They'll charge the insurance for the administration fee. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. But if it, it for, and for Medicaid, Medicare still, Medicare pays for the administration fee, but the vaccine itself is free. Oh, okay. And that's also just in case if, let's say you have a bad reaction to the, um, to the vaccine and you need to go to the hospital, they, they want to make sure that you're covered. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, but but uh, a lot of the sites, if you don't have it, they, take, they give you the vaccine anyway. A lot of them aren't even bothering billing. It, it depends on the site and, and what. Mm -hmm. but, but, but it's not like you read in the newspaper, there was a big article a few days ago that certain hospitals are charging $3,000, $4,000. Uh, that's not, uh, that's unfortunately true if, because they fed people through the emergency room and charged them for emergency room visit and evaluation blah, 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 and came up to a big number. And now the newspaper printed all that and they're, 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 they're shame on them. So yeah, uh, but it, it is, you should not be made asked to pay. Right. And if you don't have an insurance card, you should get it anyway. Okay. We have one other question. Um, what about people who have severe allergies? Should they wait? Uh, no. Okay, so the recommendation is uh, just because you have severe allergies, I mean, this again, they will ask you and you discuss it with them. They're not going to, you know, you, you tell people. I mean, when you, when you sign up, this is on a form. And if you have severe allergies and you've had bad reactions in the past, uh, they will say to what and how and where, uh, what kind of allergies and so on. But that is not, if it's not, you don't react, you don't get an allergy to this vaccine because you got another vaccine. Okay, if usually what happens is what the vaccine is made with and, uh, and so on, that causes these words. So if you're allergic to seafood, then you're probably allergic to a whole bunch of vaccine or eggs that used to grow the virus on eggs. Some of these virus, there's no virus in some of these vaccines. Uh, there's just uh, uh, a little chemical. So it's, it's, it's a little complicated. What they do want to know, if you ever had anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis is when you get, a, when you get an injection and you, you, uh, you uh, uh, have a, such a severe reaction you can't breathe and your heart goes crazy. And a lot of times, not a lot of times, but if it's not immediately taken care of, uh, you can be in major trouble with bad outcomes. This is not more common with this with any of these vaccines than it is with any other vaccine. There's no increased risk. And there is a bigger risk of getting COVID than there is of getting a Bad, not of getting anaphylaxis, not anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis, and anaphylaxis is a bigger, anaphylaxis is a very small risk. Uh, it's much easier to get COVID than it, than it is to, to, to get these uh, reactions. But all those questions don't real, I am not your doctor, this is just guidance in, in general. These questions, they will ask you when you get the vaccine, are you allergic? Have you ever had anaphylaxis? And you can discuss it with them right there to make sure that you are satisfied. I had a patient who um, uh, uh, had a very bad reaction to a lot of vaccines. And after the first dose of this, she had the same bad reactions and uh, then got the second dose and got the same bad reactions. I think she was in the hospital for a day. And they, and because of that, and then she got COVID. And because of all this, they gave her these antibody combinations, which worked for her and is available. So there is treatment for COVID. If you get sick, if you get COVID and you develop symptoms, there is treatment that will keep you out of the hospital. 
or keep you from going to an ICU. It's available. It's covered by insurance, I believe. It's antibody treatments. Our, uh, 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 thankfully, former uh, 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 president got those antibody cocktails, and it's now, they're now available uh, for people to prevent them from getting, but you have to take them early. So that's one thing, a new thing that's come up in the past month or two or three. People aren't aware enough of that. Doctors are beginning to be aware of it and they should have it. And if they don't, they should have it in an emergency room or in a, in a clinic in a hospital. So there are, and there are also treatments coming out that will help moderate uh, the severity of the disease. So, and there's the vaccine. So, you know, we're almost there. We're almost there. Just wait, just wait, keep the masks on, wait. It's not gonna be forever, okay? Well, you wasted all that time wearing masks in the last day. It's like, you know, the last soldier to die in a war. What's, what, what does that mean? <laughs> Come on. Yes. We just Don't wanna be mindful of, of time too. So we have about 15 minutes left. I see that Richard had a question and then uh, Alex has an exercise that we're going to. Yeah, go Anthony, on. if you'd like to ask your question, go ahead. You can unmute. Um, I want to be around two of my grandkids. It's been over a year. Um, I got my second shot, but like you said, I still want to be careful. So I was thinking about two weeks after I get my, after I, I got my second shot that I'm at my full potential or protection. The guidance says two weeks. After your second shot, uh, you can hug your grandchildren. How old are your grandchildren? Nine, eight, and four. Okay. Uh, mine are, I have three uh, grandchildren who are about two years older than each one of yours. And I could show you a picture, except I, I won't. Uh, three weeks, so I waited three weeks, and three weeks after this, my wife and I went to visit them, and you should see outside, the hug was unbelievable. It was for both, it was, it was a pleasure. Do that. Not a half hour hug, <laughs> not, a, not, a, not a minute hug, a hug in moderation. Be careful. It's, it's not yes. yet. It's not yet. Kids are usually do not transmit. At least what, that's what they think. It's not. That's why the schools a lot of your older. You know, it, it's not clear yet the evidence. I'm not saying kids don't transmit as well as older people, but the cases have been fewer coming from from kids and the younger the kids are the safer. But that was that variant. That's not the variant that's going around now. So we don't know. So be careful. But. I, you know, take a lot of pictures because I'm still get, I still cry when I think about this. Okay, yeah, good luck. Alex, uh, I have one other, one other quick question, I'm sorry. Um, one of the side effects that my husband just got his shot yesterday morning and one of the side effects that he got was vertigo. And I looked at uh, the stuff that was here, some of the stuff that, was, that you presented. And that's not one of the symptoms. Is that something that I would have to call, you know, check with the doctor with, or or I don't know. He never had, never had vertigo before. He had a headache, vertigo, and a little nausea. So did I, it go away? How no, long has he? How long has he had it? Uh, well, he woke up this morning. He felt it last night. He woke up this morning with it. I mean, I did call the doctor, but I just did, I didn't know whether that's one of the side effects, the vertigo. How bad was the vertigo? I mean, I told him not to get up. I was afraid he was going to fall. He said that the room was spinning, and I right. kind of got but, nervous. Okay, so certainly a headache and flu-like symptoms are part are are the most common side effects. Mm -hmm. uh, vertigo by itself is not that common, but yeah. it can happen with it. Can, certainly can happen, and certainly vertigo is part of of a flu-like syndrome that it makes sense that it could accompany this, but okay. certainly if it doesn't uh, get better, call your doctor. No, no, I did, yeah. I called just in yeah. case, but I was looking for, for it to see if it was a symptom don't, so I could say- Don't talk on the internet. 
Yeah. Don't look. That's why we have these meetings. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I meant on the stuff that you, you know, that was here. And yeah, no, and even that, ask, just ask, call, ask your doctor. That's the best source. Okay, thank because you. Because there are all kinds of, of, uh, of possibilities here, and, and uh, uh, doctors make mistakes too. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question, and then we're going to do a, a quick little uh, exercise, see how much we know. Um, but Linda had commented in the chat, I heard on the news today that something is going on with the uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine that the batch made by emergent in Baltimore factory known as Bayview can't be used. It didn't meet quality standards. She, uh, she had the J, uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, am I okay? Yes, you are okay. If she got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine already, she's okay. If she gets Hi. the Johnson & Johnson vaccine tomorrow or the next day, or anyone does, they're okay. The, what happened here, uh, this is one brand new factory that is being yet is in a process of being certified uh, and in, 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 to be able to, to, to produce the vaccine. Uh, and they found that there was a problem in vaccines that have not yet been released. They can't release them because they haven't gone through the certification pro process. All the, all the, uh, 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 what, this was J and J, right? All the J and J yeah. vaccines that are available are in the United States come from the Netherlands, or I believe I read Canada also. None from that factory. That factory is not yet. Uh, vaccines are not yet okay. going out their door. They found this. They stopped it. None of those vaccines had been distributed, and they are now checking. How the hell did this happen? What are we going to do? You know, is it a problem? It, it should. Hopefully, it's not 15 million like they say now. Hopefully, it's not because then then you worry about mm -hmm. supply. But they, they, they. So the good news is they caught it in time. Yeah. The bad news is that it happened. So okay, and there were still Thank more you. more layers of review that they had to go through. So they're like, it's very hard to get something out the door. So many, so many different areas. So they put more money into the company, more inspectors, more quality control, but they should have known that from the beginning. It's not a good thing when this happens. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Linda, you. for the question. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna do a quick activity real quick. Um, if you look on your screen, I'm gonna launch a, a polling question. There's four questions. Um, try to answer those questions and see how much we know, and then we'll review them quickly afterwards. Come on, guys, flex those brain muscles. <laughs> Here's what I found on reference.com. Muscles acquire names. Okay, I'll stop it at one minute. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the poll, okay? Okay. Drum roll. So, yep, polls are closed. So let's share these results. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Okay. So first question, um, can a COVID-19 vaccine make me stick with COVID-19? Uh, let's see. I forgot to share this screen too. Hold on. Let's look at the CDC uh, facts. Can COVID-19 vaccine make me sick with COVID-19? No. Uh, Kevin, you want to do a little expl explanation? <laughs> let's make sure this is on. Oh, but there's on. Yeah. Yeah. Since since this that this is a vaccine does not current does not have COVID-19 in it. It cannot give you COVID-19. That's okay. the short answer. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. 
after getting a COVID-19 vaccine, will I test positive for, for COVID-19 on a viral test? And that, the, um, hold on, where's the poll? Um, let's see, six people answered yes, three people answered no. Okay, the answer is no. Yeah. yeah. So uh, after getting the, the COVID-19, you, you will not test positive for COVID-19 on a viral test. Yeah, okay. if, if I could. Um, sure. So the viral test has many names. It's called the PCR or whatever else, or the antigen test. You will test positive on an antibody test because that shows that you've had immunity and that's what the vaccine gives you. So be careful when you hear, hey, I got a positive virus test and I had COVID, well, what kind of test? Was it an antibody test? Good, okay, that's what you're supposed to get. That's why um, the more you know about something, the harder sometimes these questions are to answer, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, next question. If I already had COVID-19 and recovered, do I still need to get vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine? Yes. Uh, that question, all of you said uh, yes, <laughs> which is <Yay>. good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and then the last and final question, will a COVID-19 vaccination pre protect me from getting sick with COVID-19? Six of you answered yes, yeah. three answered no. The yeah. correct answer is yes. It, it, yes, this will protect you from getting COVID-19. Yeah. From getting sick. From getting, getting sick, excuse me. <laughs> getting sick. Oh. Getting sick. And how sick is sick? Okay, so they're <laughs> certainly not sick enough to go to the hospital. That's what they measure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why you can hug your grandchildren. All right. Um, any more questions before we break out? And also for the Medicare members, don't forget uh, to complete the survey that um, that's in the chat. If you have QR code, if you know how to work the QR code, you can take a picture from here right now and it opens you up directly to the survey. But um, those of Medicare members that complete this survey, you get a $5 Amazon gift card, which we'll send you tomorrow. But um, I guess there's no more questions for the team. Well, thank right. you. Thank you for having, on behalf of Dr. Thank Ernst you. and I and the Health Services Department, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was very informative and we're grateful for the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.